Welcome to our Shepherd's Chapel Bible Study. It's a great to join us once again. Today we're getting back in our Father's Word where we left off in the great book of Matthew, chapter 16. We're going to pick it up today with verse 13, with wisdom from our Heavenly Father. And it reads, When Jesus came into the coast of uh, Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Now, why do you think our Lord would want to ask this kind of question? It's odd. Well... Because he already knows the answer. Of course he knows the answer. Yeah. But do his disciples. We're going to come to find out that even his disciples really didn't know who he was. No. You know... I mean, to us, after all this period of time, some 2,000 years later, there's no question who he is. Reading, reading his word and studying his works and, and, and seeing what he's done, we have no question about it. But you got to understand, this is all new to them. Mm -hmm. And he wants especially his disciples to know beyond a shadow of a doubt mm -hmm. who and what he is. And were. why he's there. No, he's not there to perform just a bunch of miracles and go home. He's yeah. there for the world, for the masses. Yeah. For not only the world of the day, but he's there for the world of even today and tomorrow. All the way to the end of, of flesh existence and into the future of eternal life. But they didn't understand that at this point. So he's, he's basic. I guess they weren't asking the, the right questions. Now, Lord, who are you? You know, where'd you come from at this point? You know, and uh, but another thing here, he calls himself what? Amen. Son. Notice the uppercase S on the son. Mm -hmm. He says, "Son of man." <coughs> what do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Yeah. Now, why would he call himself <coughs> Son of Man? In the Jewish. Uh, language that is a very specific office which is what the, the, the Messiah mm -hmm. so basically all along he's really calling himself in a roundabout way in their in their traditions and maybe I shouldn't use traditions but their, their teachings their prophecies of who he is you know? yes. but they're not they're not getting it at this point at, the, at no, this point. No, and, and, and to be honest, I don't think they actually believed it. Not well, here, here's, convincingly. Here's, yeah, well, here's a, here's a question. Yeah. Is that we've seen in our studies recently in Matthew mm -hmm. uh, people who had the faith yes. and knew exactly who he was. Yeah. So why wouldn't his closest disciples... See... What, what I'm leading at is that this is all on an individual basis. It's, it's for us to, to each one come to our knowledge of God. Just like what we were discussing earlier before the lecture today about getting a phone call this morning where Don and I are, mm -hmm. are following the Sabbath and we don't do any servile or or we don't allow anyone else servile work and we um we don't do any business transact any business have we faulted on that <laughs> we faulted for years on that yeah. but we've decided this we're going to make a covenant with our father and we're going to try to be obedient on this part as we can mm -hmm. and the point being is that once you learn something, once you learn it from our Father's Word, I'm not talking about on the highways and byways, I'm talking about from our Father's Word. Once you learn something, what He does, and you follow it, what He does, He lifts another veil from you to where you can, it's almost like you can take one more step closer mm -hmm. to Him. Mm -hmm. and 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 love him on his call in other words his way and what happens well all kinds of good things happen also persecution 
We know that persecution, the closer you get, the more you're, Satan's going to try to persecute you, but he can't, see. He's kept from it mm -hmm. because of your walk with the Lord. That he can trust you and you can trust him and, and, and this is what's happening. And I think this is what the disciples are beginning to learn. Yes, they're walking with him. They're with him basically until he goes up on a high mountain or, or whatever. He, they're with him 24-7. They still don't know him. They're learning faith. They're learning faith. All right. So he asks, who, who do people say I am? Mm -hmm. 14. And they said, being the disciples, they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Okay. Some, Elias or Elijah. And others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. In other words, there's all kinds of talk going around of who and what you are. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting because... People at this point primarily don't believe that anyone can be raised from the dead. But with them, these people saying this, these people they're talking about would have to be raised from the dead or come from the kingdom, say. So that, that in itself is inside of, of, there's all kinds of ideas going around. <laughs> See, that's another reason Christ came. He wanted, it's like Don and I were having a, a discussion, at times heated discussion last night, about the Sabbath. And, and um, not the Sabbath, but um, <coughs> following... The Mosaic well, Law. Well, Mosaic Law. Yeah. Where, where, and I don't want to get in, into this yet, but... Uh, it's where she believes that some things Moses just said, and other things, such as the Ten Commandments, God said. And I believe that, too. And to which I said, well, I believe it all came from God. And I'm not going to get into that discussion now because it's yeah. long, yeah. and I have to use a lot of scripture. Uh -huh. yeah. But I know Jesus, and I'll let it lay here, <laughs> Christ came not to change one jot or tittle of the law. Yeah. But he knew how to fulfill it better than anyone. But my point being is, is this is what another thing he was doing when he came. Yeah. He was saying, okay, it's written, yes, it's written this way, yeah. but you don't understand mm -hmm. right. what was meant by that. Yeah. You're making up your own ideas. Well, this is yeah. kind of what they're 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 giving the Lord here. Well, well the, the people are saying you're Elias. Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you know. Uh, another prophet. So they, and what the Lord is going to do is set them straight. Yeah. Verse 15. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? In other words, okay, that's what all these other people are saying. But you've been with me 24 7. Who do you say that I am? Yeah. 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, yeah. the Son of the living God. Yeah. Boom. There you have it. Now, question. Yeah. Why is it that Simon Peter knew, but the other eleven didn't know? I wouldn't say that they didn't know, and I wouldn't say Peter himself knew yet, but that was his best. He was on the right path. And the reason I say that, we had this discussion yeah. a day or two ago about one somebody had said, basically, you have two dichotomies of Peter. You have Peter, the great founder of the church, and the guy who walked, he had just walked on water not long ago with Christ. Mm -hmm. He had the best faith of them all. And then he denied And then he just sat there and denied him three times. Mm -hmm. said, I don't know that man. And Peter wasn't there at the tomb waiting on the third day for him to rise like he knew. None of them were. None of them were. They, none of them had that much faith. It wasn't there yet. But we're learning that it's it, that the Not seed was there. Jesus' mother was there. Oh, no. No. 
Yeah. Could he just have been repeating what Christ had been saying all along? No. 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 You'll get that in the next line. Now the thing is, see, at this point, and this is going to be our lesson for today. He had an opening window of faith. It was a brief. Yes, but we're going to find out very quickly that we can be given information from our Father. Yes. But that doesn't put us up on no pedestal. No. And that doesn't mean that's where we stay in close no. contact with our Lord. No. It's up to us on a moment-by-moment -moment basis on how we're going to deal with our Father. Okay. So, Peter says the correct answer to the question. Yeah. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Verse 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. Barjona, uh, in some captions, means son of John, but it actually means in ancient Hebrew, son of the dove. Mm. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. Now think about that, son of the dove. And who's the dove? Yeah. The Holy Spirit. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood, flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. Yeah but my Father which is in heaven. Now think about that. In other words, you were able to answer an in-depth question, a spiritual question, and you able to give a complete understanding of my question, meaning that Jesus was the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now this tells us, <clears throat> Two things in this verse, in verse 17, it says, Flesh and blood hath not revealed it. Now this is, yes. this is what I, I've been led to, to bring forth as understanding. We have two bodies. We've studied this before. We've mm -hmm. got a flesh body and we've got a spiritual body. And a lot of times, especially at first, they're contradictory of one another. Just like what we're discussing, <clears throat> who and what my behavior, and, and some of you gave comments, like like your anger, you know, who and what we are at times, or who and what we've been in the past, and to which I said, well, I, I'm a new creation, I'm a new, I'm, I don't do anything like I used to do in regards to that kind of anger that I was doing before. So, in other words, I've learned the difference between flesh nature and spiritual nature. And this is what our Lord is getting ready to bring out for each and every one of us, is that we've got to understand who's in charge. You say, well, I'm in charge. Okay, which one of you? Is it your flesh person, or is it your spiritual person? Mm -hmm. Say. And this can happen 20 times a day. Mm -hmm. You can be going in and out, in and out, in and out, fighting with your flesh, just like what you said, Jody, about, about boy, I wanted to, I wanted to yeah. say, say what we talked about earlier, but you didn't. Why? Because you wanted to do was your flesh. But your spirit overrode that non-godly, non-holy way of dealing with it. <coughs> and you dealt with it on a righteous basis, even though you were angry. But we've learned, Christ himself at times was angry. So if we can be angry, but be angry for the right reasons and the right cause, we don't get angry to just tear apart somebody and, and, and just tear into them, but to edify them, to build them up. You say, how can you build up somebody when you're angry with them? Because you're teaching them right from wrong. And sometimes the only way to get through is on their level. God's way, but their level. Do you have a question? But two things are happening here with, with Simon Peter. At, at first he was dealing with his flesh, but Christ had just showed and told him, now Father got through to you, and you answered what Father gave you, now you have understanding of who and what I am. And not just you, but everyone that's listening, which was what? The other 11 disciples. All that were around him heard the same thing. So Christ continues and says in verse 18, 
I hear this. And I say unto thee, this is to Simon Peter, that thou art Peter. Peter means what? Petro. Rock. 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 Right. In Greek. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Oh, I see. I think what you were... You're, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was noticing when I said specific offices and titles, that's what I was looking up. Christ, when he says, Thou art the Christ, the meaning of it is um, forgiven. One who can for, who, the one who can give forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Only God can do that. Sure. And that was the official title he answered to him. You are the one coming for our forgiveness. He calls him Simon Barjona Bar 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 mm -hmm. in that verse previous, mm -hmm. his name, mm -hmm. which is not who we know him as. Right. And now he says, you are Peter, a new creation. A new, I'm going to give you a new name for your new title and your new office and your right. new creation. That's right. That was a moment. That's the moment of going from flesh to spirit. Yes. When we talk about you're now a new creation, I didn't see it till the names popped out at me. Yeah, that's, you got it. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yeah. The gates of hell will not succeed in what you do. You say, no, 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 wait a minute now. Peter denied Christ and, yeah. and, and did all these things. Yeah. And what, what is Jesus giving to him? Well, let me do the other verse and explain completely. 19, <laughs> And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. The key, that, the key of David to unlock the wisdom and the knowledge of, of, of all the things of creation. And whatsoever, listen to this, And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth yeah. shall be bound in heaven. Well, that's a pretty high high cotton there, isn't it? Yeah. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. In other words, he's given Peter the whole kin caboodle. Yeah. Right? But does that mean that Peter has now the power and the authority? Well, no matter what he says on earth, hey, it's not even going to be done in heaven. Or whatever he says says uh, about anything they're going to have to obey. Why would Christ say something like this? Because we know later on, because we know the story, we've read the scripture, that Peter de even denied Christ three times. So, how the, does that mean that the world needs to deny Christ? No. Of course not. So what is he giving him here? He's saying basically, Father can now talk through you. Father will give you the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding to do what needs to be done. That's what we're talking about, about Moses. Mm -hmm. Given the law yeah. versus, yes, he was given the Ten Commandments. Some say, well, the Ten Commandments was written by the finger of God, which it was. But about all these other laws and the statutes and the ordinances. And the only thing that's been done away with are the blood ordinances. Well, what about all the statues and stuff? They're still in effect. Mm -hmm. You say, well, that was Moses. No, that was God speaking through Moses. Most people do not believe that. I know most people don't believe that. I, I don't care. I know. I don't either. The fact of the matter is, most people are getting it wrong. Yes. Now, that's, you say, well, that's your opinion. It is my opinion. It's God. And until, and until God changes my mind... That's going to be my opinion, because I believe that's God's law. Because if it wasn't, this would be a very short book. Yeah, we'd probably only be reading the New Testament if it wasn't God's law. Right. See? But the point here is, is that it, it looks and appears that Peter has been given this authority now <laughs> over everything on earth. Above Jesus? No. no. As long as he followed God. Well, see, that's the that's the key. That's where I'm going with this. Yes. Is that let's bring that to today. 
let's bring that to today with, with how we deal with our Father. We, yes, we're all in this room saved. We have been, been, been baptized in, 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 in God's Holy Spirit and, 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 and we owe Him our lives. However, when we study His Word, when we do His, His, His Word, when we do His laws, we are con considered by Him to be holy. To be, to be righteous, meaning we are doing what is right according to His laws, His ways, His teachings. However, periodically, we do what's wrong. And we're not holy. We're not righteous. We're being unrighteous. But we've learned of repentance. And we adhere to that. We we repent to the Lord. Lord, I'm sorry. Whatever you whatever you say, a personal between you and your Father. Lord, I'm sorry for what I said. I'm sorry for what I did. Please forgive me. And we are forgiven. If it comes from our heart, we can't con them. So, with us doing that, we we we've learned over a period of time, just like the disciples are learning here, is that. There's times that Father will get through to you, lead you, guide you, and direct you, and then when you're doing what He says, everything goes well. However, when you don't do what He says, when you disobey Him, things don't go well. And that's what happened and is going to happen to Peter and the rest of them. But at this particular point, just because it reads here that whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven, is not giving Peter the keys to do whatever he wants to do, whenever he wants to do it, however he wants to do it. That's only when God himself is coming through and leading, guiding, and directing him, and Peter is following that. That's why he's made the leader of the church. And what church are we talking about here? The church of the Roman Empire? The church of the Pharisee and Sadducee? No. The first Christian church. <clears throat> and that's what he's establishing here through Peter. The first Christian church. And it's not written here, but who's the cornerstone of that church? Who's the cap of it? Christ himself. So there's no one ever going to be above Christ. But Peter is going... We, and I hate using this term because God never created that term. He's the first pope. He's the first leader of the, the Christian religion. Okay. But please, the only reason I use pope is because some people won't understand unless I do use it. But no, he wasn't a pope. Okay. Don't tell the Catholic... Well, the thing is, there's some, there's a lot of people in in that denomination who call a man a flesh man father, and, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to put anybody before God. There's only one Father. That's what the Word says: one God and one Father of all. So, verse twenty. This is interesting. Then charged he, in other words, he charged he his disciples that they should tell no man. That he was Jesus the Christ. Hmm. Probably protecting him. Definitely. Well, that was my question. Why do you think that is? I think he was protecting them. Why does Jesus need protecting? He, no, no, he no. Was... Not him, his disciples. Oh, his disciples. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's protecting his disciples from being slaughtered. Yeah. yeah. Those are dangerous times. Jesus wasn't scared to die. Well, the thing is, <laughs> that's what he came to do. Exactly. But On he... his time frame. Yes. Yeah. So it could have been both. Don't don't let the cat out of the bag before the time. I have things yet to do. Well, I don't think they knew that at that time. Oh no, they didn't know nothing. They were well. They're beginning to learn. Right. Yeah. They're beginning step. to see uh, of what's going on, and because after all, to my knowledge, I believe most of them. And not just the disciples, but especially um, uh, Judas Iscariot, believed that Jesus was here 
to basically take over. Hmm. Set up an earthly kingdom. To set up the earthly kingdom. But they wasn't. And, and he basically told them all, especially by the time the Last Supper came about, hmm. he's told them all what's, what's going to happen. Because yeah. Yeah. we're going to get into that in the very next verse. Yeah. He's, he's starting to tell them, you know, why he's here and what's going to take place. So there was no excuse for them not knowing. But there's a difference between knowing and believing. believing. He told the Pharisees and Sadducees last chapter, I'm only going to give you one sign, the sign of Jonas. Yeah. Yeah. You believe it or you don't, <laughs> I don't care. So he, he charged them, he told them. When I say charge, that means he commanded them. Yeah. You don't tell nobody that I'm Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> now notice it says Jesus the Christ. Yes. Yeah. Not Jesus Christ. Oh. A lot of people believe that was Jesus' name. His last Jesus name? Christ. Yeah. Yeah. You know. But and Christ was the Messiah, right? Right. That's yeah. what I looked it up. Not his last name. No. Christ Christos, the anointed one. The forgiven. The, mm -hmm. the one with the power to forgive. Yeah, That's right what there. it means. And there's only one there's only one that has that power. Right. That's why he was called in prophecy Emmanuel. Yes. God with us. What is so hard to understand about that? But see, people believe that there's that there's two gods today. They believe that there's God the Father and Jesus the Christ. There's two entities. There kind of is. It's kind of three. And the Holy Spirit. But let's put it this way. At the end of the millennial period, when it's all said and done, all the evils removed and all that, will there be God the Father and Jesus the Christ? In Scripture. Not, not no. at the very end. No. Not after Christ. Not after God's kingdom comes down. He had to do it this way Why? for us to see Him. Alright, let's, let's go there. Yeah. Why did Jesus the Christ come? Now we know He came to defeat death and to defeat Satan bring forth salvation to mankind. I came to fulfill but why, the law. Okay, okay, but why did he come the way he came? Now we know that John the Baptist was a form. He could have been Elijah. If people would have accepted the Christ, at that point, John the Baptist would have been Elijah. I know that's a different subject for a different time, but the point being is it's the same principle today. Do we have God the Father today? Absolutely. Do we have Jesus the Christ today? Absolutely. Do we have the Holy Spirit today? Absolutely. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. When I say that there's only one entity, it's a part of Him that exists today. And that part is the only part that we in flesh can see. Mm -hmm. We cannot see God the Father yeah. in the flesh. Never will be able to. Guess what? Even during the millennial period, mm -hmm. we will not be able to see God the Father. Yeah. To He's too end. holy. He's too pure. He can't, he can't see. We're not going to be able to see Him Visually see him until at the end of the millennial period when all is pure. See, that's how holy he is. And people, people who don't respect that, let me tell you, they're not respecting our Father. But now it says in verse 21, from that time forth began, notice, began Jesus to show unto his disciples. Meaning it didn't happen before this. Began to show his, unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests. Didn't say the people. And scribes. He's going to suffer from the high holy muckety ducks of the day. What man called the church of the day, the synagogue of the day, the temple of the day. You say, well, God's temple was there. Yes, but God wasn't there. Say, that's the point. His children had forsaken him long ago. 
They're making up their own rules to follow. Oh, they may have had the Holy of Holies there, but guess who wasn't in there? God's not going to be where he's not wanted. God's not going to be where he's not worshipped and honored. And they weren't worshipping and honoring him. There was a structure there. That's why when the, uh, another place where the disciples said, look at these great buildings, talking about the temple. Mm -hmm. Look at these great buildings. And Christ said, I'm going to destroy it all in three days and build it in three days. Mm -hmm. Boy, that stuck with them. Mm -hmm. Well, it took, it took hundreds of years to build it. How are you going to rebuild it in three days? Because they didn't understand the temple's right here. Mm -hmm. See, God decided... This is my temple. This is what. This is where I'm going to dwell with you, with my children. That he couldn't understand that. They needed a structure, a building. You know, stained glasses. On. Well, they didn't have stained glasses. Yet. So the, from that time, that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed. Mm -hmm. He told them long before it ever happened <coughs> that he was going to be killed. And be raised again the third day. And we were discussing this just earlier. Why in the world weren't they standing outside the tomb waiting on that third day? Because they really didn't believe it till they... Until it was there. They didn't believe it until they saw it. Yeah. When he came to them in the upper room. Yeah. You don't believe it until He's... you see it. <laughs> Some people don't. And the fact is, why? Now let's bring that question to today. Because there's a lot of things people and I, I won't say the I won't say the heathen of the world, I'll talk about Christians. There's a lot of things that Christians today don't believe. You say, well, how can you say that? They don't believe that Jesus Christ ain't coming first in nine places out of ten. They don't believe on the Sabbath day. They don't believe on Christ's uh, uh, day of birth. They don't believe on Passover. They follow Easter. They follow Christmas. They follow all these other traditions of men. And they're... Christian people who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in their life. And then they're following these things that are traditions of men that are making void the Word of God and they wonder why their life is going to hell in a handbasket. It's not supposed to be this way. I'm not supposed to feel this way. I'm not supposed to have these things happen. Why? Because you're not listening. You don't have that protection over you I pray for that protection twice a day, if not more. I pray that at every moment of every second, Lord, of your protection. Because I need you every second of every moment of every second. There's not a moment in time that I don't need you. But how many people believe that and trust in that? I'm, I'm serious. Two. Huh? Two. <laughs> I won't say two, but... Count them. I bet you ain't going to get much more than that. I'm telling you. I know. I'm telling you, there's a you lot of people... You want to know what? That's what. They just... And, and, and they're forsaking this word. They're not taking this word as a holy book, a holy road map. You know, and when you say something to somebody about the word says or the Bible says, and they say, well, I don't believe in that book. No. You're dead in the water right there. Right. So what are they saying, actually? I don't believe, saying, don't believe, don't believe in, in God. the word. You don't believe in God. Yes. Thank you. Case closed. So you're telling me, even though you're saying you're a Christian, in some cases they just say they're Christians, but they don't believe this. Then why do you think he says? I am the word. I uh, you come before me, I never do you. Get out of my sight. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What is that truth? The Word. The only way we know the truth, it's written for us now. Now, I'll, I'll give them way back when, guess what? They didn't have the fullness of the book that we have. 
they didn't have the revealing of the Old Testament. They, but they did have the old, what we call the Old Testament. It wasn't the Old Testament to them. It was the Word. It was the Torah. The first five books. That, that's what they had, and that's what they had to go on. But see, Christ came to reveal that. To reveal the understanding of what has already been written. Mm -hmm. Actually, we're not reading anything new. No. We're just reading the description of something that has already been written, but nobody understood it. And didn't believe it. Just like his disciples. See, his disciples, because they didn't believe it a lot of times, because what did he call them last week? Where it said, oh, ye of little faith. Right. See, and, and, and another place in the Word of God, it says, you, you have some form of faith, which means you have some form of understanding, but you don't have the completeness. Well, guess what? I think everybody in this room can agree. You know what? We want the completeness. That's why we study. Mm -hmm. If we didn't want the completeness, why study? Now, some people say, well, there's all kinds of people studying this and that and the other today. No, there's all kinds of people reading over Scripture verses. They're told to memorize Scripture verses. Well, it's great to memorize Scripture verses, but if you don't understand what that Scripture verse means, the fullness of it, what's the point of being able to recite it? Because you can recite it baking potatoes. It doesn't mean it's going to make the baked potato holy. It just means you can recite a Scripture verse. I know I'm being facetious here, but the thing is, people are taking the Word of God out of context. And that's why all hell's breaking loose in people's lives. Well, it's not supposed to be this way. I'm a Christian. No, you're a person who believes in Jesus Christ and accepts Him as your Lord and Savior. But what makes a Christian means a Christ man, a Christ woman, a Christ child of God that obeys His Word and then does what it says. That's a Christian. That's why, like what Ross said just a few moments ago, there's going to be some Christians stand before the Lord. I'm not judging them, but when they're judged, I would hate, I couldn't think of anything in life worse to hear. Mm -hmm. Get out of my sight, I never knew you. I mean, can you imagine Whoa. something that you thought you were doing right? See, that's why the millennium is, is, is just so perfect. It's not a second chance. It's, it's a, giving a person a chance who never had the right opportunity of hearing the real truth. And that's what the millennium is for. Do you get it? No. Mm. Verse 22. Amen. Then Peter took him. Took Christ and began to rebuke him. Now think about it. Now think about this. Jesus just gave him authority. Right? Now think about Peter. Oh, I got the authority of the kingdom. What what happens? The first thing he does, he rebukes Christ, saying, Be it far from thee. Hey, you're not gonna die. No. They're not gonna kill you, Lord. Lord this shall not be unto thee. Now think about this. Lord, you gave me authority now. This shall not be unto thee. You're not going to die. You're not going to be persecuted. Now think about that. Ballsy. Plain speaking. But you know what? This was Peter's first test. The Lord says... I'm going to give you the church. It's going to be on your shoulders. You're going to run things. Hmm. So Peter, what instantly happens? Back in the I hate to say this. It's almost like all of a sudden Peter's got a big head. Mm -hmm. And he tells the Lord. Yeah. He rebukes the Lord. And says, no, Lord. This isn't going to happen. I'm going to see to it. Yeah, right. So what does the Lord say? We'll end here today. 23. But he, being the Lord, turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. He said, well, well, Satan? Let me do the whole verse. 
Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest. That means you don't understand. Not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. You don't understand what I'm saying, is what he's telling Peter. But what is Jesus doing? He's rebuking Satan that instantly when, when Peter got the power, yeah. who entered in? Satan. Satan. And this is so important for us to understand today. Hmm. When we get the power and the Holy Spirit deals with us and we're, we're, we're gifted and, and we're loved and we, we see the power and the authority of Almighty God, guess who's behind the scenes with him? Satan wants to get in there and remove everything that God has tried to do and has done in your life. And it is up to us to understand we got to be careful. we got to be careful that Satan is always around the corner. And he always wants to pull everything good, everything holy, everything righteous from you. I mean, let's face it, when, when God gifts us, we're on a high. I mean, we're, we're just, we're ecstatic. What a blessing. What, we, and we know this, and we give credit and honor and glory to God. But Satan doesn't want us to feel that way. So he's going to come with a fiery dart or something, come around the corner to try to remove that high, that love, that glory from you. And if he can't do it to you directly, he'll use someone on the outside to try to get through. So we, when we do battle, we need to know what kind of battle we're dealing with and who we're dealing with. Because after all, Father, our Holy Father, just gave Peter the information. Christ gave Peter the kingdoms, the keys to the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. The next thing you know, he's saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, right in Peter's face. Mm -hmm. Now, can you imagine Peter? <laughs> no. And one minute, I mean, he's on a, hey, I, I, got, I got it going on here. I, I got it right. I'm not putting thoughts into Peter. I'm just saying, this is how we work. This is the flesh nature of things. That we are gifted, we, we're given just honor and praise and glory from God in and, and, and certain situations in our life and we know where it comes from and we give Him all glory. But be careful because Satan is always around the corner and he's always going to be around the corner until at the end of uh, uh, at the beginning of the millennial period when we turn into spiritual mm -hmm. bodies when he's locked away for that thousand years. But even at the end of that thousand years he's loose for a short season to mm -hmm. test Think about it. After this is one, just one moment of a day with Peter, can you imagine being with the Lord for a thousand years and having all glory? I mean, just blessing after blessing after blessing for a thousand years, how people can get? We just saw what happened in a few moments of time. But that's flesh. But during the millennium, we'll be in spirit. Have all the blessings. That's why Satan will still be loose for a short season. To test people where their heart really is. And this is what it all comes down to. It's where your heart is. What you truly believe in and trust in. Peter still had a problem. Mm -hmm. He showed her coming right out the gate. He's given the keys. And he blew it. Blew it right. Rebuking the Lord. Who does he think he is to rebuke? He just said he's the Christ. Out of his own mouth, he said he's the Messiah. And now he's rebuking him with that knowledge? And this should be a valuable lesson for us to understand. We've got to be careful. Because we too can get on the wrong path thinking what we're doing is right. I'm sure Peter thought he, what he was doing was right. Well, no, Lord, you're not going to die. We're going to save you. You, you, don't, have to, you don't have to die here. We're going, to, we're going to take care of this situation. No, Peter. You're not following Scripture. You're not following my word. And that's our lesson for today. Any questions? Comments? To God be the glory.